What's up, podcast listeners? It's your host, Rafael Matuszewski, and this is another solo episode, and I am recording it on my phone to put it on YouTube. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying that because, you know, I haven't used YouTube for long, longer videos than like three minutes for tutorials, so thank you for all those people who've been watching me on YouTube or listening to me through their podcast player. Today, I'm gonna keep it under 10 minutes, as always. <laughs> Even though I never do, because I go on tangents and tell random shit. Anyway, I gotta do some shout outs because we got some new people listening to my show all the way. Number one, I almost forgot who, what number they were. So number one, all the way in Texas, a city called Middle, Midlothian, Midlothian? Hopefully I said that correctly. Anyone from Texas, please reach out to me and let me know if I said that correctly. Uh, number two, all the way in New Zealand, the city of Auckland. Shout out to everyone in New, Ze New Zealand listening to my show. That is super awesome. And number three, all the way in the UK, we have Northampton. Shout out to everyone in the New UK listening to my show. That is so cool to see people on the other side of the pond listening to my show. Um, so... Today is another topic that is a little left field, a little, um, I would call it more bigger picture. You know, the last couple episodes have been about um, things that are not directly related to tangible things. And I think when people shift the mindset of, you know, thinking about the bigger picture than how many calories am I supposed to eat? How, you know, what time am I supposed to stop eating in the evening? And all that other small detailed bullshit that, funny enough, my Flashback Friday episode that was previous to this one uh, just came out on that. And I think when you look at the bigger picture, your success comes with it, you know? And a good example of this is like a lot of people in business, the people that are money driven and only care about the numbers and only care about how much profit they're gonna create in the quarter, in the month, in the week, or whatever it is, tend to lose sight of why they started in the first place. So, if you look at businesses, for example, Apple, when Steve Jobs started it, he could care less how much money he was making, he just wanted to get his products out to the world. And the success and money came regardless. You know, when you start thinking about helping people in general, and not worry about, all right, if I'm helping this person, I'm making this much money off of them. If I do this, I'm making that much money off of them. If you're generally helping a lot of people, that money will just come to you, right? So that's like the analogy I like to use. So the topic of today is legacy. Now, I've heard people talk about legacy in you know, those motivational speaking events and things like that, and I never really understood it until now. So I, I kind of indirectly was practicing this concept of legacy with everything I'm doing in my career. You know, my ultimate goal is to help as many people as possible to better their fitness and health journey and not, you know, n and nothing else other than that. And everything that I create from this video to this podcast to you know, my infographics that I post on Facebook and Instagram and videos that I post, tutorials that I post, and or any kind of information about health and fitness, I'm building my legacy, that I'm someone that's generally here to help others. Like, you'd be surprised if you message me on Instagram, I will answer you back. If people email me that I don't even know personally, but they saw my stuff online and they had a question about it, I will email you back. There's some people out in this world in my industry that don't even want to do that, which blows my mind. So now how do I tie all this into fitness and health? Think about what your legacy for health is going to look like. Here's an example. Typical mom of three, I always like to use the name Sally Sue, yo-yo dieter, has at least done 13 different diets to try to lose weight been obsessive about everything she's been eating, 
all the food that she's buying. She went through different, you know, trends and cleanses and all that kind of crap. But her kids are now growing up seeing their mother approach fitness and health that way, almost being obsessive about it, always trying different diets, cutting out foods, eliminating things that their kids are not supposed to be eating anymore, then bringing them back, doing something else. And your kids, you know, it's like monkey see, monkey do. So now you subconsciously put it in their brain that that's what fitness and health is. So now your legacy as a parent, you know, to your kids, that's what it's gonna be. Like, think about it, is that what you want to, you know, teach or like put down towards your kids long term? And that kind of blows my mind. And I've asked this question before to other fitness professionals on my show where if they had kids, I'll be like, how are you going to, you know, promote fitness and health in your kids' lives without going to the, like, without going to the extreme, without messing them up really royally so then they become obsessive or create binge eating disorders or anything like that you know this same sally sue person probably weighs herself multiple times a day and now if you have kids they're going to be seeing that and they think that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to have this anxiety stepping on the scale you're supposed to feel terrible stepping on the scale like that becomes your legacy for health how do you want to build a healthy family if it doesn't start with yourself so now let's flip it what if you're a person that's you know without kids how do you want your legacy to be do you want your friends to know you as that person that's constantly chasing you know three rabbits at the same time to finally see the weight loss that you're hoping for the you know trying to be consistent at the gym you don't want to have your legacy as that person that's always you know, trying different things and just being obsessive about this whole fitness and health thing. Legacy, think about it, it's huge. You know, I went through my own struggle of being obsessive about fitness and I thought that was like normal. Like me going into the fitness industry, like before I decided that was gonna be my career, I thought that in order to be a healthy person, you had to be almost like a freak of nature, like a freak into um, fitness. Like you have to eat out of Tupperware containers, you have to like never drink, you have to never eat bad food, like you gotta be that extreme person. And then I followed that mindset and kept going and going until it started affecting the people around me and I didn't really, really realize it until my wife and girlfriend at the time pointed it out to me and I was like, holy shit. I never knew my actions when it comes to my health could affect the people around me in a negative way. So now from that point on, I've been always trying to find that fine balance where it's not overly, you know, aggressive. And then, you know, kind of like I was talking about before, like how fitness is not a punishment. There's this weird thing in this industry that, you know, like if I talk to someone that I met at a party, a dinner or whatever, and they find out that I'm a coach and they're like, oh, like then I shouldn't be eating this. And I'm like, why not? I'm literally eating the same thing as you. There is no bad food. There is no like thing that if you eat a bag of chips, you're gonna explode and die and be overweight your entire life. Like, no, that doesn't happen. Like if you wanna eat those things, you can, right? So. I think if we start with ourselves creating a legacy of health that's gonna trickle down to other people because people will listen to you. People will listen to whatever you say about fitness and health because it's a hot topic. But if you're a person that spews out the basics that I've been hammering out forever on my show, then it's gonna start changing things. We're gonna make a change in this world. So for myself, I want my legacy to make fitness and health as easy as possible. It's really simple. We just have to go back to what we were, you know, a couple hundred years ago. We're active every single day. We got a lot of sleep. We ate lots of vegetables, fruit. We ate a lot of good meat that wasn't processed. And 
boom. Like, I don't know why I pointed number five because I had no point for number five, but that's it. Like, those are, that's it. <laughs> we don't need anything else. So my challenge for you, the listener, the viewer, in this case that I'm filming this, is to really think about what kind of health legacy you wanna leave behind on this earth that's gonna affect a lot of people because people that are into health, they talk a lot. You know, people who are keto followers, you know who they are. People who are vegan followers, you know who they are. The people that laugh at keto people and vegan people, you know who they are in your circle of friends, colleagues, acquaintances, people on Facebook. So create a well-balanced legacy to help others. It all starts with you right in here, right deep do deep do deep down into your soul. <sighs> all right, I think I'm gonna stop it right there because we're at 11 minutes. I wanna keep it short. So thank you so much for listening. You guys are amazing. Shout out to everyone listening to my show since day one. And shout out to everyone who's new to my show listening today. Let's crush this week, you guys. You guys are fucking amazing. I love you so much. Give me five stars on iTunes, you guys. Review this thing. Share it with your friends and family. And keep an eye out for my new Cut the Shit, Get Fit sweater. I just posted a little image preview. I should get my own sometime this week, hopefully. Um, and I'll post some more stuff and then post the available date to get it. And then also in uh, November for Black Friday, my fitness ebook, The Ironclad Body Training System, is gonna have a sweet ass sale. It's gonna be 50% off from the original price. It's gonna be huge. Don't miss out. Till next time, you guys.